So we were talking about men's problems with uh, insects, like impotency, uh, premature ejaculation. Men today have so many problems with sex that it causes a lot more issues than people think. And I wanted to get your viewpoints on what you believe men's issue with sex is. Do anybody do something? What issues? What yeah. issues? Like uh, being a gay man, does, does, is there, you find that there's more problems in the gay community with sex than there is in the straight community? Well, you know, uh, 20 years ago, being gay and having sex was fun. You could go to a bar in Silver Lake, and by the time you got your cocktail, there'd be somebody crawl up under the bar and, and service you right then and there. But now, I'd say the biggest problem with gay sex is that there isn't any. Everybody's in long-term relationships. Relationship, yeah. Everybody's getting married, including yours truly. And, you know, it's like, what are these people that complain about gay marriage, you know, it... <laughs> They should be, thank God, because now we're all normal, and we live normal lives with uh, very little sex. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like it's a terrible thing. <laughs> I feel like that um, e intimacy is an issue for me. I mean, I don't have any problems having sex. It's just being intimate with the woman and having a sustainable relationship, if moving on forward from that. Um, <laughs> Getting older, you, you know, you start to, start to worry about your prostate and things like that, and having to be able to uh, actually just ejaculate at some times. Before, like four years ago, I could look at a woman and I'd almost ejaculate. Now I'm like having trouble just, you know, getting turned on sometimes. So sounds like you might have a health problem. That's something that you know I definitely I get tested regularly and things like that. Um, as far as uh, sexually transmitted diseases are concerned, but. I think sex is um, more, for guys that have problems, it's more of a mental problem than it is a feeling problem. Uh, I've been married almost 15 years now before that, multiple uh, female partners, and it's like you have to enjoy it. You really have to be a part of it, and a lot of men today aren't. But what's getting you to that point? Yeah, I think what a lot of the problems today with men is, is they don't know what women want today, okay? And, and the problem with women is they don't tell men what they want, and most men learn sex from porno, and not every woman out there is a porn star. Mm -hmm. We want them to be. We, we think we want them to be. I've right. dated a few porn stars, trust me, you don't want that. They have less sex than anybody else, so, no. Um, I, I kind of think the more, problems with men in general, whether you're gay or straight, is you actually don't listen to the person you're with. Good. You know, a lot of a lot of men try to control women, or a lot of uh, gay men that are more dominant try to control their partners, instead of actually listening to them. I looked at my wife like a porn star because of all the women that were with. Some, some were good girls, some were bad girls, but I already had that demented thought in my mind, so that's how I treat it my first marriage, and it completely falled apart, fell apart. In my opinion, I think, um, I think pornography has added a lot more issues to men with sex because it's distorted our view on how we look at women okay. and, you know, the process of what sex is, you know, and uh, even being in a situation where even women playing roles like uh, trying to be porn stars, I'm like, what are you doing? Just, you know, just be here right now. and that of throws you off a little bit and you're like i don't know what's going on so i feel like because we watch a lot of men watch a lot of porn films and that becomes the standard of what sex is so, so you mean and there's no communication there's no communication it becomes kind of like media what we wear what how we talk and what we do i think that all of social media affects that also yeah. i mean you have these apps and things that you can just go and find somebody it seems like it's just a hookup app where then all of a sudden you're just going to that. Where, where do you take it to the next level with having that intimate relationship with somebody? I mean, you have Grindr, Tinder, uh, Twitter. I mean, Twitter yeah. doesn't really do that, but like those two apps especially, you can just get on them and then are Lulu for women that just rate guys that like they're a piece of meat, which is kind of funny because we're all talking about porn stars and women, but women yeah. do the same thing for guys. It's called. Well, this whole social media thing has completely desensitized us all That's to true. the interpersonal relationship yeah. and conversation. 
I mean, I know people whose entire sex life comes out of their computer screen because it's easy, it's fast, they say, it's clean, and they don't have to talk to anybody. But don't you find that more frustrating in the end? For it's your partner, tragic. For your partner, because, I mean, most of my clients that come in to see me, and they tell me that their, their husbands or boyfriends are on porn sites every day. Uh, he needs help. Yeah, I think that's where the problem is, where we, an average teenage kid get introduced to porn, what, by 12, 13 now, even earlier? Yeah, try 10, 11, yeah. And I, I was 13 when I was first, when I first masturbated. Yeah, I, was, I mean, uh, my background is I, I got introduced to pornography when I was, what, 17? And I just really grew up with a really great family, so, you know, through high school, boys talk, so you're curious about that. Were you grow, did you grow up in a religious family? Yeah, okay. I did. Most of you? I grew up in the Catholic. Catholic? Religion. Catholic. Uh, United Church of Christ. That could be your, your ministry, you know that. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, I th well, earlier we were talking about, um, about spirituality and sexuality, how s in some spiritual teachings they teach men not to ejaculate. Uh, Which I'm curious about, is that a good thing or no, a bad thing? No, it's, it's not good for your prostate, it's not good... To for, ejaculate or not? No. To, uh, to hold back. Okay. Some spiritual practices teach you to hold back your, your sperm, to not ejaculate. And uh, medicine or, or scientists have found out that this only damages your prostate even more, your scrotum gets in, in, impacted. Uh, so no, I don't, I don't believe that's yeah. a good practice. But uh, like I said, uh, who am I to tell anybody how to, what to do? You know? For myself, I, I've been with one or two women in my life, and uh, I enjoy sex, but the older I get, it's, uh, I think one partner is the way to go for me today. Like before, 10, 15 partners a week. And, uh, to me, that was that was normal. That was okay. But now, like I said, I have one. I have a girlfriend in Singapore. One girl that's plenty for me. Do you do you um, Skype sex? No, you know. You don't. So I mean, so, I mean, because that would so, be a form of pornography, also. Yeah. So what does that become about? So you pretty much saying it becomes about int intimacy, which is something. Well, you, it sounds like you didn't have when you were younger. I, no, I never had empathy. <laughs> I didn't have a connection with most women that I was with because it was just like you said, just sex, wham, wham. Okay, next, and you you can't get any any true communication with anybody when it's just uh, okay, next, you know, next notch on the belt. Who do we go to next? And and a gay, I have a lot of gay friends in San Francisco and in New York, and that's what it was. You know, the more partners, the better. Okay, but. Now I look back on that and go, why was I doing that? It was lacking something inside myself because did, did I really get anything from any of those people, okay? Luckily, no diseases either, but uh, no, I didn't get anything from them. And with the relationship I have with now, it's, uh, I love talking to her. I like spending time with her. Yeah. So. And I, I think that it's different for the, when you're younger. I think it's harder, though. I think it's harder right now to, even, even if you wanted to uh, have sex continually and, or multiple partners on a given week, I think it's harder to go out and find those women or men, depending on your, you know, what you like, is if you can have multiple partners, where you go, I guess. If you go to clubs, seeing maybe you can. But going out and same thing, I always resorted back to meeting people and, having a conversation with somebody to yeah. try and actually say hello and how are you and maybe buy you a drink is in this day and age, it's all, okay, hi, how are you? I find that people don't really know how to communicate anymore. Well, yeah, but and uh, we don't really know how to communicate with ourselves first. So that's where the problems start. Well, and where do you go to meet girls or guys? Well, you're married, so don't matter. Well, Grindr, I mean, that's where everybody meets everybody. They go on Grindr, they find a guy who they think is cute they go over to his house or they, or vice versa, and they have a, a quick sex, usually takes 20, 25 minutes, and then they're done. And then they go back to their cell phones and Find text their partner. friends okay. about but it. But what is you know? Grindr? It's an app. 
It's yeah. an app on, it's on a, your iPhone or your Android, whatever. Where men find men. And then Tinder is where men and women find each other? Yeah, I actually downloaded Tinder like a week and a half ago. I, down, I deleted it the next yeah. couple of days because it, it, yeah, it was all about that. It's like, you know, women you've never met, it's like, hey, baby, it's like, you don't know me. It's like, thank you. And then no. you know all me. you do is you look at their profile and you can either swipe right or swipe left. If you swipe right, that means you're interested in them or swipe left, they go, they go away, I think. Or so how do you know if you're interested? You just look at their picture. That's it? And that's yeah, all that's it all is. you it's have. It's living site. pornography. Yeah, you look at the picture, you get an art on, you go there, you do your business like a dog and leave. And that's Tinder's it. a little bit different though because it, it's, I think because of the man-woman relationship, and I'm not, not saying an offense, but like, in the originally when Gr Grindr was um, made, I think it was strictly for hookups, but Tinder, they're trying to start more of like a dating sites deal where you go out and you actually have, a, uh, like you go out and have a drink and then that's it. Um, I know a lot of girls that are doing oh. that. Uh, I am not on it, but I just, like the, the, the yeah. things I've been hearing of what it is. Do you go to strip clubs? I don't. I don't think I can no. throw money down on a table and see yeah. a pussy in front of me I, and not I, get it. Yeah. I, don't think that's I get tired of it myself. It's like, why would you go spend money and not get something? At least if you take a girl out to dinner or take her to a movie or whatever, you, you guys like each other. But it, isn't it all a mind fuck anyway? It is. Yeah. It, it's, 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 yeah. yeah, it's, I couldn't, uh, I think I was in Denver with some friends. They're like, oh, let's go to a strip club. And I walked in it for 10 minutes. I was like, I can't handle this. I just, I, I, I believe it's a distraction. I think more and more men and more and more women these days are not paying attention to the true things in life. Uh, sex is just another addiction. I think sex has always been an addiction though. I, I mean, yeah. as we as humans are, or as males anyway, we want sex. We, it's our natu it's in nature for us I, to want I to have sex. I believe at one time for me, it was an addiction. It was an act. It was just a part of my life. Really? Yes. It's like my wife. A lot of guys go, I make love to my wife, or I make love to my girlfriend, and I just want to stick my finger down my throat. Because it's, it's ridiculous. How do you make love to your partner? You love your partner already. Why don't you just have sex with your partner and show them how special they are in the bed by feeling and touching and kissing? But again, I mean, it's ridiculous. Because of pornography and all these other sites, you don't know what... Nobody knows what the, the partner wants. Nobody knows what that woman wants. You know, uh, there's anal sex, there's uh, oral sex, there is, you know, vibrator and penis sex. I mean, how many? What do you do? How do you how do you talk to somebody and ask them what do you do? In my when I meet up with women back in the day before I got married, even my wife, I explain to her things that I like. Okay. And if she doesn't like it, I don't think it's going to work. Okay. I was straightforward. I draw the line in the sand. Okay. And yes, some of it's like pornography, but that's been my problem since I was a kid. I so think that also begs the question of like, how do you actually view the person you're with? Are they just an, a sexual object or is it just somebody that you really want to connect with? I think that's kind of what we, we people talk about making love and having sex. Because it's like you can close your eyes and just have sex. It doesn't really matter who's in front of you because you just want to hit it. It's more of a bond. I think love, like making love. I think that's where I know. Yeah, I think that's kind of finger down your throat. But like making love when you when you're when you're two intimate beings and you know where what each other want and you're in that moment and you can just feel the energy between the two. I feel like that's making love. Whereas if you're just having yeah. sex with somebody, it's a. Yeah. You're having sex to ejaculate and to hopefully get the girl to that's, come. Well, and that's, that's kind of a you know small box you're talking about. I don't for each man I think it's different. Like with, with me, I don't think of it that way. That's fair. I yeah. love my wife. I would go to battle for my wife. I would sacrifice my life. My wife comes home if I have the day off. I clean the house. I have food made for her. That's love. But, but when you fuck her, you're really fucking. But her. when I'm when I'm having <laughs> sex, it's an act. It really is. Relationship is like this, and I've talked about this before. Relationship is like this. This is how much of the relationship is sex. So okay. if you have all these great things that are happen, you talk to her, you listen to her, you you give her a back rub, you watch TV with her, you go, you do do things, go on vacation, whatever. You have a very strong relationship. It's like guys that say, my wife is my best friend. No, she's your wife. 
because after a while you're gonna start treating her like your best friend you know it's that's in my opinion sure it's like the yeah. wife is a higher anarchy how long have you been married well I've been in my relationship for yeah. 22 years married since August when was the last time you had sex with my husband <laughs> yeah. no, anything but your anything but your hand. Yeah, the hand doesn't count. The hand doesn't count. Um, Remember, we're on air. Uh, our wedding night. Six months ago? No. Oh. September, October, November, December, January, February. <laughs> February's not over. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So six months, more or less. So why why is that? Well, we've been together 22 years. Um, the, I don't look at him as a sex object anymore. Then why did you get married? Because we love each other. Okay, that's what he's saying. The idea of loving somebody and sex, sex is a minute. Two different things. Okay. Well, I think it's completely different. Um, I, I, the fact that I don't run after my husband like a mad dog anymore does not, in my eyes, minimize the love we have for each other one little bit it's everything else we do uh for and with each other that creates the relationship the sex is just sex okay last time you had sex um for a month maybe two and i i'm dying on the inside explain i just i what we were talking about earlier i love having sex okay. and i love women you're a good-looking guy. Thank you. You got everything going. You're tall. What? What could be the problem? Um, where I am in my life, where I'm meeting girls, like I, I can't, I can't. Where I meet girls, I can't really be having sex with them. You need right. to go on my Facebook. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> because women, uh, I have women, and I'm a lot older than you. I have women come on to me all the time, and uh, and they're always younger women, so. I can't understand why somebody who looks like you is having problems. I, I personally, because I have a lot of friends that have these issues, mm -hmm. I think it's a success thing. When women see desperation, it's a turn off. Mm -hmm. Total turn off. Yeah, it's it's got to be more. It's, it's like that in the gay community too. It's a, when you're so desperate, it's like, oh man, get off my freaking leg. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? You have to look the part. Yeah. I mean, you have to Confidence be success. Is a, Confidence is, is a huge. big and deal. When you start off with uh, liking a woman or, you know, you're pursuing a woman, confidence is a major portion of it. And then as you get older and you go through with it, you your insecurities break down. And they, they, come, they shed away and then the girl sees that. And then that's where you can really tell if the woman or male likes you. And then you can really... and start that relationship also it sounds like you just not looking to get hooked up you're looking for something a little more meaningful a little bit more right can now. i ask so, a personal question of course you can Sorry. ask me whatever uh, are you confused sexual no no so you're i love total vagina i will that. eat it all day long oh sorry <laughs> sorry <laughs> <laughs> Please, please, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so now we're talking about sex. This whole forum is turned into men in relationships. No, I know, let's talk about sex. It actually comes to that. It comes to yeah. relationships. Well, it, I know, really I does. think we're all confused about it. It's like, you could, I can imagine you could go out there and get laid anytime you really wanted to. Yes. Why don't you want to? Why don't... Why is it so hard for you? It's not hard. I, I, um, <laughs> I just, I've been in the process of, you know, getting older. I, oh, oh, see, you said, that's about the fifth time you mentioned that, <coughs> getting older. <coughs> about getting older, men with dysfunctions, you know, you know like uh, prostate is a big problem as we get older, uh, diabetes, stuff like that. It uh, doesn't allow you to achieve erection. So. Is that, does that worry you so much that you're having a problem there? No, I, I mean, I, have, I can get an erection pretty quickly. Okay. Um, can, it, you, can you hold it? Can you? Yeah, I can hold it. It's, I mean, if I'm, like, if I'm balls deep, then I, <laughs> and I got, um, I can actually come pretty quickly, which is kind of a problem also. So it's like. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. Is, is, is that a fear? 
to premature ejaculation? No, because I've been actually worked it out to where I make sure that I try and satisfy the woman a little bit further, like more so when I go down on her, so that way when I okay. do come, because I know I have that problem sometimes okay. coming too quickly that at yeah. least I'll know that she'll be a little bit satisfied. I think you should go into my Facebook because I teach a course on Tantra, teaching men how to hold on to their... I think about baseball sometimes. And like try doesn't that, <laughs> doesn't that mess up the whole mood? <laughs> that works. <laughs> sometimes it does. Sometimes it does. And or it's a home run. Or, oh, oh no! <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! Sorry about that. Okay, but uh, last time you had sex. Sheesh. Um, last year sometime. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think Again. kind of like him too. I. Uh, I think I'm looking for something a little more meaningful. Okay. And. Um, yeah, just in the process of trying to figure out, I think kind of like most men, a lot of us, for some of us, it start younger than, than some, where you kind of, I think it has to do with also what you want in life, what your goal is, and kind of once you figure out, this is what I want to do with my life, therefore, this is the kind of par partner I want. But that's a separation between what you want to do with life and, and men and sex. Yeah, I feel like it's all intertwined, though. Like it's, it's like, in, at least in my opinion, the, how I see it is like, you know, like kind of, I want to be with certain type of women, okay. and I'm looking for that specific person. But are you afraid of women? And that question goes to everybody. Well, some women do scare me. Like, can you tell me why? Um, because part of me doesn't feel that I'm that experienced, and they. You know, they come sometimes they look too strong. They ex there's this, all these expectations that they have of it's what a man is, and I'm like, I don't even know if I can meet those standards. Right is, that, now. is that assumption on your part, or is that what yeah. women are telling you? That's what they, they say. Really? Yeah. You guys are running into the a different kind of women than I am because. Uh, I gotta go on your Facebook page. You definitely gotta go on my <laughs> Facebook because women, I think women intimidate a lot of men for the one reason. Basically, like I, like I always say, men are the stupidest creatures alive. We are just dumb, okay? Gay men too. We're, we're all just stupid. Women are so much more intelligent. And uh, like in, in all relationships, is there a male and a female entity here? No, there isn't. That's the cool part about being gay. There's nobody to pull, put on the stops. That's what the women do in relationships. They, yeah. they put demands on you and make you feel insecure about yourselves and, and put out when they feel like it. Yeah. And when you behave in a certain way that's acceptable to them, and it scares the hell out of most men. And in the gay world, most guys, you know, the guy gets a hard on. Don't waste it. He can't think anymore. And it's like, where do I put this? Where do I put this? And, you know, you find somebody. Now. Do you masturbate a lot? I go through seasons when I do, and specific uh, seasons like spring's a good time, <laughs> fall not so much. There's so, nothing wrong with it. I mean, it's a natural thing. Yeah, I'm just wondering. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Remember, he's a Christian. I'm a, I'm a Christian. You know, too, you're right? a Catholic. It's different. It's <laughs> the same umbrella, yeah, right, isn't it? No, and everything's different. In the Catholic, Catholic Church, you leave that to the priests. You don't <laughs> masturbate yourself. Oh, come on now. <laughs> We're trying to get over that. <laughs> there's, oh no man in, there's no man in religion topic. <laughs> okay, good. Well, so. I think what I mean is uh, there are certain times where I'm just busy and I just want to go home and crash. Okay, You're that busy? Just work and, you know, like... I get start really early and I get home really late and I just want to sleep. Does anybody know what masturbation is all about? Self pleasuring. No, mm. isn't releasing. it? It's more. It's, it's more. It's release. It's a release. It's, it's a release. It's yeah. a release. I, I suppose. Yeah. But Self preservation. It, it comes from all, or <laughs> so. all organ cut, uh, orgasm comes from your frontal lobe. So what happens here is your your immune system gets protected. Uh, it's, it has nothing to do with sex. It has only one thing to to build up your immune system, to allow you to just let go of stress. Uh, it kills uh, free radicals. Okay. So the average person should be masturbating between four and five times a week. And this, this is a very normal, normal action. But because of the, again, I hate to get in people's faces about religion, but you know, the Catholic Church, I think it says, and it says, it is better to throw your seed upon the belly of a whore than to lay it upon the ground. Well, 
I just can't find a horror when I need one, you know. But um, well, the horse could be on the. On I TV, prefer the so. face. The face, you know. is, yeah. <laughs> face is just as good. <laughs> yeah, I mean the, the belly, you know. Well, well my question is also, how does that affect your Christian? sexual appetite when you must bit a lot? Well, each there are men that have different levels of sexual appetite because I was heavily had a nasty appetite. Many different women. It didn't matter. So would to you me. call that a problem, or was it? Last time I had sex was three days ago. Before that was two days ago. Before that, no, was I'm a saying week in your heyday. And in between, if I feel that I have to have a little more, women are a lot different than men. Women don't need it as much as men. Sometimes oh, they don't oh, need it at all. Oh, Some, oh, oh, oh! I have to stop you there. Women are, have have more of a sexual appetite than men ever thought about having. And it's just, <laughs> sorry, I, I know you disagree, but uh, women, um, do you know, do you realize a woman orgasms five different ways? Do you have any idea how, what, what those Wait, ways uh, are? I, I, can, I can <laughs> give, I can give you money. a few. Okay. How? Uh, <laughs> anally. Anally? Yes, vaginally. Vaginally? Um, Mouthfully. <laughs> Mouth, no. no. Orally. Orally. Spot. Okay, vaginally? But, but no, you said no. If you said, uh, did you say clip? No, I said. Okay, then clip. So five. But the first one is your brain. Mm. Women orgasm from the brain first because they're so. They're, women are so in the brain anyway, and uh, most women don't orgasm the first time when they're with a man for one reason because they're all over the place. Do I smell good? What's you know? What do I smell like down there? It's all there? about relaxation. If yeah. you get the woman comfortable yeah. and relaxed and you can you can feel that when they're when they're in bed with you. If they're just, you, they you can breathe. feel the yeah. breathing out and just, you know, my friend the other day was like, you know, her eyes were rolled back in the back of her head. And I'm like, okay. You're, How you're can nice. you see their eyes from down here? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you're taking a pee. Okay. Hold on. Uh, oh yeah, that looks good. Okay, <laughs> so let me go back. You know, no, it's like, you can feel yeah, in the body, body if exactly. they're really relaxed, and then yeah. you'll be able to orgasm. And, and one more thing about women: a man. Not one more thing. Let's just okay. A, a man, a stiffy, he just wants to put it anywhere. He don't care. But with a with a woman, again, a woman orgasms 18 times in half an hour. A man only twice. It takes him 15 minutes to refresh. So think about that. Who's more powerful? Who has more? Their organs, uh, <laughs> orgasms are more, much more intense than anything. So, like I said, uh, that statement that <laughs> women don't want it or need it. Well, I, I could rephrase that. Okay. The older they get, it becomes less important. Oh, no. Have you ever okay. been with a menopausal woman? Yes, I have. <laughs> they want it day and <laughs> night. I was yeah, married to one. It's like, it's it's like not, not every man is different. Yes. Yeah. Not every Many woman is different. Oh, sure. But, okay. There's a new, I think it's for Cheerios or one of those commercials. It says, no, shredded wheat. The women are, are more orgasmic at the age of 80 than they were at the age of 30. And as this woman's eating her, you know. Then we need to have a talk after the show. <laughs> okay. But like I said, so I'm going to wrap it up. I'm going to leave you guys with just one more thing. Is We're done? No, go ahead. Okay, good. Do you love women? Yes. Yes. Good. Oh yes. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. Are you afraid of women? Robert, are you afraid of women? I am not. They're no threat to me. <laughs> <laughs> really? Okay. Well, I'll I don't want or need anything from them sexually. Okay. Okay. But see, again, sexually, there's there's more to than intercourse to sex. You know that. Well, yeah, okay. of course I do. So, so even even the people on the set, there's a lot of women. Even any kind of uh, communication with them is sexual. So if I give Tess a look like this. Uh, I think she's going to be afraid because that's an ugly look. Okay, okay, that's good. But this is what I'm saying. Um, okay, uh, I'm sorry, back to you. Um, I love women. Certain women do scare me, but not all. Not all? Yeah. I love all kinds of women. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I love women. I, there's no doubt about it. But are you scared of them? That's no. the question. Okay. Zero. You're not scared? No. Um, that's a weird 
It's a weird fr- it's a question for me. Like, uh, scared how? I mean, scared sexually, scared. Do you feel intimidated? Intimacy. There are certain women, yeah. That scared I, that you're going to be alone? Uh, that, but that has nothing to do with the woman. That has to do with me. Yeah, I do agree alone. with that statement. Because if I'm scared of being alone, that's because I have things that I need to work on work on a yeah, personal okay. level, and that has nothing to do with the woman. Um, but yeah, I'm totally afraid of being alone. I want to be, I've, I would love to be married with children. You really would? Yeah, yeah. 100%. You can have a couple of mine. <laughs> but th- that's the thing. It's <laughs> Not yours. I, I, I can have a couple of yours, but I feel like it's one to one. I think I would find, I would find that one have person. one person, yeah. And then I have that intimate, sexual experience, love, everything in there, not making love, but having that love with one another, and sex would be great. We could do anything, anytime, anywhere, any. Okay, we're going, we're, we're going to have to shut down here, but I want to just dive into that for one more second. <laughs> Finding that one woman, what's it going to take to get you there? That's going to take me. Always us. It, it always is. You're, you know, you go through relationships in and out and all these things, and you've been in a few. You've been married to a woman. Now you're married to a, now you're married to a you man. Married to a woman? I was. Yeah, he was yeah. for eight years. No, oh, I didn't hear that part of the conversation. Well, it got. It, it was during a noisy part. Oh, so. Yes, I was. I didn't actually come out until I was 32, and I tried desperately to live the life that I thought everybody expected me to live which was married to a woman, get a couple of kids, be a normal but person. I could, I could look at you and see you're gay. Did, did it, was everybody else in denial? Don't take a breath. I, I can't. Wait a minute. I, you can't? I, yeah, I look at him. I, 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 I couldn't six. What do I have? Like I have a lot of male friends that are bodybuilders. They're, they're survivalists no, like there, me. And there's something about You just don't know. I think that if you're happier, you're not a wrong woman. I think that look. Uh, but I think you can. I think a person can tell when somebody's gay or not. So you're saying you have gay? He's good gay dog. Yeah, exactly. I got a good gay yeah, dog. Yeah. Well, all right. I'm, I'm guilty as charged. Gay as long as. I'm like a. Ex- hey, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Was it that the way I said hello to you? Yeah. Did I do that? <laughs> <laughs> no, the way you were. Hi. Hey. Hey. <laughs> the way you were shuffling. I mean. Is it the Gucci? <laughs> I mean, uh, okay. <laughs> Okay, well, we gotta we gotta wind this down as always. Uh, thank you very much for being here, and uh, maybe we can continue this conversation <laughs> another time. But always, I want to stand up and give you guys a hug here. <laughs> thank you, Mister. Appreciate it. And don't grab my ass. <laughs> <laughs> Not a chance, pal. Yeah, let somebody else do that. <laughs> Okay, and you're in the hot seat, huh? I am. My name is Robin Olson. I'm a professional violinist who's played on more than 1,200 major motion pictures. I'm a composer who has written music for the Gwen music. And uh, you know what I hate? I hate scofflaw dog owners in West Hollywood who don't Pick up their pooches poop. My name is. Not so lucky. My name is Eve Weir. I uh, I do public speaking. I'm a storyteller, and I also uh, do PR and marketing. Um, in the process of trying to write a book. So uh, I'm excited about that. I hate it when people are trying to be something they are not. Hi, my name is John Higley. I am an actor and I run a restaurant. And what I hate is when people don't say please and thank you when you open the door for them. It's just grinds my nerves. Just say please, thank you. That's all. Magic words. <laughs> uh, James Logan, SAG after prop maker, uh, production designer on smaller films. Um, I'm a survivalist and I belong to Southern California Pathfinders. What do I hate? People that don't use their blinkers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're watching Nana on the Gwen Network TV. 
and listen to the theater. See you next time.